Hello, I'm Brant Ball, the Integrated Pest Management Agent for Lubbock County, and we're going to cover uh, aphid control and monitoring on uh, uh, roses today. There's uh, uh, three aspects to uh, aphid control, uh, especially when dealing with roses. Uh, number one is going to be uh, monitoring. Uh, number two would be aphid uh, identification, and number three would be our control tactics. When monitoring roses for aphids, you need to pay special attention to the uh, meristematic regions or, or the, uh, where the new growth is coming out. You need to pay special attention to the uh, top side of the leaf and to the bottom side of the leaf and dig way down in there uh, next to the leaf axles and where the, uh, the, the new buds are, 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 are emerging. And this is where these aphids like to hide. Um, in this example, you have all this new growth coming out uh, here in, in this in the terminal area of this branch and there's aphids all down in here so pay special attention not just to the leaves but to the uh, uh, to the leaf axles and to the stems themselves. Some of the damage symptoms that you need to look for is the presence of, of honeydew, um, the uh, somewhat wilted cup shaped uh, leaves and what you'll notice is uh, a high number of these aphids stacked into these actively growing regions and, and within those areas you will see the, uh, uh, the honeydew that has been dropped on, onto the leaves. As you can see from these photographs, the, dis the distinguishing characteristics of aphids are that they are somewhat small, they are pear-shaped, and uh, they come in different colors and most of the, uh, uh, the aphids that you find on roses will be green in color, uh, some will be yellow. Um, some of the insects that, uh, that can be confused with aphids on roses are, uh, are the flea hoppers, um, the uh, different plant bugs, and thrips. Now thrips are small and sl slender colored uh, insects and most of the other pests that you, that you find on roses are highly mobile. Another good characteristic for aphids is that they are somewhat sessile and they don't move very fast at all. Um, another excellent identification for aphids is the presence of cornicles coming off the hind end of the pest. Let's discuss the uh, control of, of aphids on roses and we're going to go over three uh, major control tactics starting with cultural control and that's going to be the use of our high pressure water sprays and, and uh, physically removing the aphids from the plant using uh, you know, your fingers, uh, paper towels. And then we will uh, discuss uh, chemical control using the uh, contact insecticides and the systemic insecticides. Now, uh, depending on which uh, control measure that, that you're going to use, you have to, uh, uh, to monitor your, your overall aphid infestations. It's hard to use these cultural control measures when you have an uh, extremely high population of aphids on your plants. So monitoring is extremely important. Uh, again, starting in, in mid-March and, and going all the way through uh, until May, uh, keep a watch on your, on your aphid infestations and when you start to pick them up in these actively growing regions of the plant, uh, that doesn't mean that you have to automatically treat. You want to look for the presence of beneficial insects, especially ladybugs in, uh, in this area. And uh, <clears throat> just keep a watch uh, overall on the plant and see if these infestations are moving from uh, terminal to terminal. If the infestations are, are, are starting to increase and the beneficial insects aren't working for us, then it's kind of time to start thinking about which control measure you want to use. If you're going to uh, go the non-insecticide route where you're going to use the high pressure water sprays or, or you're going to uh, physically just remove the aphids from the plant, you want to start this fairly early. If you have uh, a plant that's just totally infested with aphids, then uh, using the high pressure water sprays and or removing the aphids from the plant uh, is, is a very time consuming uh, activity, especially if you have more than one row. So if you're going to go the non-insecticide route, let's uh, not let the population get uh, uh, completely out of hand. If we're going to go with the systemics, and uh, really I, I like this form of control uh, uh, better than, than the contact uh, insecticides, uh, the systemics need to go on fairly early. I would put them on 
uh, when you have an increasing uh, aphid population and the beneficials are not working for you. Um, you need to get them on early uh, as, a, as opposed to late, especially if you have a large rose bush. Uh, uh, the, uh, it takes a while for the plant to, uh, to take up that systemic, to get it uh, pushed into these meristematic regions. Um, uh, so therefore, you need to uh, apply these products fairly er uh, early uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the spring. Another reason why I like uh, systemic insecticides is that it, it does protect our beneficial insects. Uh, uh, aphids do have a piercing sucking mouth part. They are feeding on the phloem regions uh, or, or the phloem vessels of the plant. And uh, <clears throat> the uh, insecticide is, is inside uh, the plant itself and therefore our beneficial insects are protected. Uh, the use of contact insecticides, I think, is, is, is very uh, useful for when uh, you're not uh, monitoring your plants on a regular basis and you discover a, uh, uh, a very high population of aphids, you're picking up the damage, you're picking up a lot of honeydew, um, then I, I think the contacts are necessary. But you do need to read and follow all labeled instructions for, for all of these uh, 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 control measures. And especially with the contact insecticides, products like, uh, like Orthene are not to be sprayed when, when you have open blooms. And you can actually do more damage to your roses with contact uh, uh, insecticides than the actual pest is doing. So be sure to read all labeled instructions.